Um, I'd like to welcome everyone here to Cleveland State University and to Anne Marie's dissertation, Defense. Yeah. Yeah. Before we bring Anne Marie on, I'd like to take a second and just go over the procedure of how this is going to unfold today. Anne Marie is going to speak for about 25 minutes. Um, she's going to go over her presentation. Afterwards, we'll have a brief opportunity for questions. I think there's a, a, a brief, a small number of questions that the people in the audience now are going to ask. Afterwards, we're going to excuse everyone in the audience, where the committee, the members of her dissertation committee, will have an opportunity to ask her questions. We will then ask Anne Marie to leave, and we will vote as to whether or not she's going to be able to make a decision on her passing her dissertation today. Then we will bring you back in and we'll announce the decision. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. With no further ado, I now turn the, the uh, presentation over to him. Stress levels. 
You've put up with my constant changing schedule. Um, you've been a huge support and guidance through this process, and I'm so grateful to you for all that you've done. For our donors in the room and for our, our families that are here with us today, I am equally grateful to you for all that you've done to help support the mission of Open Doors, and again, to support me as I continue to move the organization forward. And last but not least, to the students of Open Doors, you are the reason I stand here today. You are my continued inspiration. It is because of you that I will continue to fight for education because I know how important it is and I get the opportunity to see you grow into it. So thank you for being a part of my family and thank you for being here today supporting me. So I'd like you to imagine for a moment being 14 years old, being 11 years old, being 12, being maybe 13. Imagine waking up in the morning and feeling like, I just don't want to go to school. It's too hard. Imagine thinking, I have to run to school to be, avoid being picked on. I have to run to school to avoid being picked on by a gang. When I get to school, several students pick on me. They don't make my day any easier. And then I sit in a class where a teacher looks at me and says, I don't even know why you're trying. Imagine that empty feeling. Imagine having no one there to support you. Imagine feeling like you are failing, but really it's not you, it's us. We are failing you. At the end of eighth grade, in the state of Ohio, 64% of eighth graders read at proficient levels. Only 64% at the end of eighth grade. In addition, in the state of Ohio in 2011, 35,000 students dropped out of high school. 35,000. In addition, 14 million students go home every day after school to an empty home where there is no guidance where there is no support, and where there is no love. This leads me to the point of talking about the importance of after-school education. After-school today is no longer what it was 10 years ago. 10 years ago, after-school was simply a safe place for kids to be. It was a latchkey program. Today, after-school education is not only complementary to the school day, it is necessary. In 2008, a Harvard Research Project did a study, and they looked at what defines a high-quality after-school program. What they did was they came up with these five variables. So we looked at appropriate structure and supervision, strong relationships between youth and staff, intentional and meaningful programming, sustained participation over time, and again, you'll see this is a key piece, a strong partnership with the family, the school, and the community. In 2011, the After School Alliance went back and said, yeah, we agree with all of that. We also add these key pieces. Alignment with school day learning, a promotion of varied activities that serve focus on the whole child, not just one area, safety, health, and wellness, and ongoing assessment and evaluation. This leads me to the model which we chose to study, and a model which I am very proud of, Open Doors Academy. Open Doors Academy serves as a foundation of education, investing in the lifelong learning of its students, staff, and families. The mission of the organization is very simple. Protect, inspire, nurture, and challenge youth to reach their full potential through the provision of meaningful out-of-school programming. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the distinctiveness of why Open Doors is so strong. And I'm going to tie it to the variables I use in the study around hope, well-being, and engagement. So first of all, the first key piece of our model is the core relationship between staff and students. If you walked in the room today, you would see that there is a genuine love and caring between staff and students. Staff come in, they hug, they welcome you, they encourage you, they're there to support you. The research points to it over and over and over again that if there's a strong mentor in a child's life, they can and will be successful. This ties into the variables around engagement 
um, strong adult relationships also promote engagement in school and overall well-being of a child. The second piece is the school community connection. Not just a partnership, not simply saying, hey, we're going to partner with this school, we're going to do our thing and you're going to do yours, but rather having a genuine partnership where you work hand in hand to support each child. This further promotes hope for that child. They have a stronger support system. And guess what? If they're engaged with you and you're connected to the school, they're going to be engaged with the school. The third piece is parent involvement. We all know the stats. The stats will tell you the more a parent is engaged, the more a child is engaged. It proves true. So you have to invest in your parents as much as you invest in your youth. And finally, duration of programming. We have to stop looking at it as it's a one-shot deal. In one year, I can get a kid's math scores to 30% increase. But guess what? The year after, they may decrease again. We have to focus on how we're creating a continuum of programming over time. The ODA program model has four core areas. Middle school, high school, summer, and parent engagement. Middle school programming, you will look around the room and you'll see about 200 middle school faces today. Um, who are here engaged in learning. The middle school programming consists of a meal every day. During the day, I should actually add, during the day our staff are in the schools. They're there to sit in on classes. They're there to meet with the teacher. They're there to have lunch with the student. They're there to be their support system and their cheerleader. They're also there to handle situations when they arise and need redirection or reflection. In the afternoon, the students come to us. They get an hour of homework help and academic tutoring. They get an hour of enrichment programming that focuses on four core areas that are not addressed any longer in the school day, health and wellness, arts and culture, character development, and global social education. And then they get socialization time. Our students even meditate every day to calm their own systems down. They're learning how to self-regulate. When they enter into the high school program, it changes a bit. Now they're responsible for their own um, choices, but they have to complete 75 hours of volunteer work a year in the community, they get tutoring, they go on college tours, they engage in service learning projects, both locally, nationally, and internationally, and they begin to look at their future as having more possibilities than they would have ever previously thought. Summer immersion experiences, we talk about our youth getting involved in the summer programs. They get eight weeks of summer programming with us in the middle school. They pick from four different camps that they can choose from each week. Camps range from robotics to culinary arts to pottery camp. In addition, our high school students get paid summer internships. I had a student this past summer who was really interested in being a um, physical therapist. So we placed him at Metro Health, where he spent the summer working in the pediatric physical therapy department. And then last but not least, our parent engagement piece. Parent programming, as I mentioned, is critical. Every parent in this program has to complete a minimum of 16 hours of parent engagement a year through family events, parent education workshops, or through a volunteer. Last year, 99% of our families completed all their hours. We had one parent who was shot at two hours. So when we talk about engagement, I, I want to talk about how we expect our level of engagement amongst our students. So here, each student at Open Doors must attend a minimum of 90% of the time. There's no exception to that. If you fall short of it, you're going to get sit down and have a conversation. You either want this or you don't. Most of our students want it. Very few will turn around and say, hmm, not so much. Each student must make a concerted effort to increase their social and emotional development and to be concentrated on how they are growing. Each student must strive to reach a 3.0 GPA. That doesn't mean that every one of our students has a 3.0. In fact, the average GPA a student enters in with us is a 1.9. But our goal is to move them forward towards a 3.0. And by the time they get to high school, it's a 3.5. And then last but not least, each student must work individually with their mentor once a month to ensure that they're working towards progressing on their goals. So now we get to the current study. The purpose of this study was to look at programs like Open Doors Academy and how it relates to achievement-related behaviors and academic performance. So there were four research questions. The first research question says, do youth engaged in Open Doors Academy differ from youth not engaged in Open Doors Academy in the context of hope, well-being, and engagement? 
The second question said, does duration of engagement in open doors make a difference? So do students who are in the program longer demonstrate higher levels of hope, engagement, and well-being? The second research question, are hope, well-being, and engagement predictive of academic performance amongst students participating? Third, does duration of engagement in Open Doors Academy relate to academic performance as indicated by grade point average? And then last but not least, do youth engaged in Open Doors Academy differ in developmental assets across the spectrum of personal, social, family, school, and community? So I'm going to really breeze through the literature review. One, because we've already gone through it in the, the pre-program, and two, well, we're just going to breeze through it. So we're going to talk about four pieces of it, hope, well-being, and engagement. First of all, the research on hope shows that the more hopeful a student is, the more closely it is tied to their academic performance. So a student who is more hopeful is going to have a higher GPA. They're also going to be more likely to demonstrate success as an adult, and to, um, as a young adult, and to um, display positive behaviors. Engagement, when we look at engagement, engagement also is very closely tied to grade point average. So students who are more engaged are more likely to um, do well in school, as well as relates to a higher GPA. And then third but not, last but not least is well-being, which high per personal power is positively associated with motivation, mastery, and task orient orientation, whereas low personal power is related more towards things of self-handicapping strategies, um, avoidance school orientation, and so forth. And then last but not least, achievement, um, academic achievement. When we talk about academic achievement in after-school studies, there's been very mixed reviews. So some people will say, yes, after-school programs can impact academic achievement. Others will say, no, it has no bearing. The study of 21st century um, community learning centers, which Open Doors has six of them, um, have found that there is no connection. While there are other things that these programs do well, raising grade point average is not one of them. And that will be very important as we move forward. So let's get to the study. So we had a couple different things. First of all, we had our independent variable and our dependent variable. Our independent variable um, consisted of um, two groups. The comparison group, students who were not in open doors. There were about 40 students studied in three of the schools in which we currently operate. All of the three schools are very closely tied in terms of demographics. And then our treatment group, which looked at about 176 of our students, ranging from sixth grade through high school. And we looked at them not only as a, a single group, but we broke them out in years one, two, three, and four or more years in the program. Our dependent variables consisted of grade point average, hope, well-being, and engagement as measured by the Gallup poll, as well as developmental assets in terms of context, which I'm going to get to in a moment here. So in looking at our um, breakdown of students, you can see here is a pretty 50-50 on male-female, just a slight variation, a few more females than male. Um, ethnicity, majority of our students were African-American who were studied in this um, measure. And then we looked at two urban city schools and six inner ring districts. I'm sorry, six inner ring schools in districts. Um, the two districts that we worked with, or I'm sorry, the three districts we worked with, um, all three were urban communities. All three were either on, and it ranged from academic watch to continuous improvement at the time the study was completed. And each school had a range of free and reduced lunch from 63 to 100%. The one school was a slight outlier at 63%, the others were about 73% or above. And then when you look here, you can just kind of see um, majority of our students were in middle school, you have, but it's still pretty fit throughout. The reason for this is because in the last three years, Open Doors has grown significantly. Um, so the organization has gone from one site with 40 students to eight sites with 350 students. So your younger students are going to have a larger population because that's where we start growing and then move them upward. It also is number of years in the program here, you can see a similar thing where majority of our students are year one and then year two, three, and four. So we used two different instruments for this, um, for this study. The first was the Gallup student poll. The Gallup student poll was developed by Gallup. It looked at, it's a 20 item online survey that asked students on a scale of one through five how they agree, strongly agree or strongly disagree with statements. 
Those statements were tied to three variables, hope, engagement, and well-being. And in those three variables, there were three categories the student would fall into. The first on the measure of hope was either students were hopeful, stuck, or discouraged. I'm sorry, discouraged or stuck was the ranking going downward. Engagement, they were either engaged, disengaged, or actively disengaged. And third, well-being, they were either thriving, struggling, or suffering. The next instrument we used was the developmental assets profile. This measure was a 58-item online survey. It was developed by the Search Institute. Um, it basically looks at assets. When we talk about assets, each youth possesses a number of internal and external assets that help them, um, help them develop as they grow. Okay? So an example of an internal asset would be something like creativity or a sense of humor. External assets are things like support from adults, um, support from teachers, um, having a, being engaged in the learning process. This study does not, or this scale does not measure the number of individual assets in a youth. Rather, what it does is it provides a um, scale in terms of various contexts of family, school, community, personal, and social. So as we go into the findings, you're going to see here where our students fall on the scale as is measured here. Procedures, um, we did an IRB approval and we received that in May. Um, we quickly, very quickly turned around um, parent consent forms and student assent forms. We basically conducted most of our data the last week of school. So all data was collected the last week of school and um, grades were collected later at the end of June when they came out from each school. So let's get to the findings. Findings for question one. To go back to it. The youth engaged in Open Doors Academy differ from youth not exposed to Open Doors Academy in relation to achievement-related behaviors of hope, well-being, and engagement. This first finding was not significant. There was not a significant difference, but there was a trend towards a significance, and it was so close. For those in the room that don't understand statistics, and I'm guessing that's quite a few, this value, this P equals 0.056, in order for something to be significant, which means that there's a big enough difference to show a significant difference, that there is a big enough difference, it would have to be 0 0.05. You can see it's 0 0.056, so it's very close. When we went and looked at the percent of students, remember I said there were three categories students to be ranked in in each one. So look at the highest level, students who are hopeful. Open door students, 67% of you were listed and chose to, were listed as highly hopeful. In comparison to non-open door students, there were only six, um, 47. When we looked at engagement and learning, 65% of open door students were highly engaged in comparison to 47% of their peers. We also then went and looked at a comparative sample of national and state data. Um, we were able to, uh, retrieved this from the Gallup, um, who provided this data. It was also, these were both samples of convenient, convenient samples. Um, but you can see here that when we look at the average, open door students still rank higher than not only the, their peer group, but also state and national data on the measure of hope and engagement. Research question two, or I'm sorry, one A. Does duration of programming of, in Open Doors Academy relate to student performance in relation to hope, well-being, and engagement. The findings for this were statistically significant. We then went and did a post hoc test and looked at where is that difference most clear. We found that it lied in between years zero, so students who were not enrolled in Open Doors and students who had been in the program for two years on the measure of hope, as well as between years one and four on the measure of well-being. What this means is that the longer you're in open doors, the more hopeful you are, as well as the longer you're in open doors, the higher level of thriving you've demonstrated on the measure of well-being. And you can see that here on this chart. Now, one of the things I want to point out here is you see this big dip in year three? This is typically eighth grade year. Let me tell you about what happens in the eighth grade year. Um, this, and remember, we took this the last week of school of eighth grade year. Most eighth graders are now preparing to move into high school. A couple things happen. One, they've outgrown middle school, and they're about to take a big leap forward into a new environment. 
So a lot of the feelings that they're probably experiencing internally relate to that dip that we see consistently in that third year. Also, what we did was we went in and we looked at very um, specific questions on the Gallup student poll and said, where do our students rank? Where do the students of Open Doors rank in comparison to other students? So I know I will graduate high school. You can see the mean score on that. This is out of a scale of one through five. The mean score was a 4.58 for Open Doors students in comparison to a 4.06 for non-Open Doors students. I energetically pursue my goals, 2.7 to a 1.77. I can think of many ways to get good grades. Open door students, again, are, are stronger in their mean score. And then I know I will find a good job after I graduate. Again, open door students demonstrate a much higher score there, 3.86 to 2.74. Going to question two, our hope will be an engagement predictive of academic works. What this means is our students who are more hopeful, engaged, and thriving are going to have a higher GPA. Okay? And the findings from the study say, yes, it is statistically significant. There is a difference. I'm sorry, it is predictive of um, grade point average. And, but it's really only 6% of the variability. Now, some of you may say, well, then who cares? It's only 6%. But you have to remember that there are other factors that play in. And this, this really ties to these when we talk about the whole child, that this isn't just about one piece. If we start to look at things in a more holistic manner, if we look at all of these factors, including some of these other achievement-related behaviors over here in the circle, you can see it all ties together. So that 6% may seem small, but it has a bigger impact because it overlaps with many other things. Question three. Does duration of engagement in Open Doors Academy relate to academic performance as measured by student GPA? Yes, this was significant. And this is probably one of my favorite findings in this study. You can see right here, students who are in the program one year and students who are in the program four years or more, there is a statistically significant difference between the two groups. So the longer a student stays in Open Doors, the higher the grade point is. And I, if you remember, I was talking earlier about academic achievement and the mixed findings on the studies, and again, 21st century sites and how they haven't been able to really um, justify that programs like that are, are supporting academic growth. This shows you that when you look and you invest long-term in students, their grade point average will go up. And then finally, my last question, do you think h and Open Doors Academy differ and developmental assets in the context area of school, community, family, social, and personal. We did not find a statistically significant finding on this measure. However, when we went and looked at the findings more closely, you'll see here, and remember I gave you that scale earlier with the instruments of low, fair, good, or excellent. Most of both open doors and non-open doors students demonstrated good scores across the board. So talking a little bit about the limitations of this study. Um, first of all, it was a sample of convenience. Um, we had a limited time to complete the study. So there was, a, um, there was a, a, a sense of urgency in getting data collected before the end of the school year due to timing with the Gallup, which we were um, generously borrowing from Case Western Reserve. Um, the other thing is that it was a relatively small sample size for Gallup. Um, Gallup is used to working with uh, studies that are 25,000 and larger. Um, this was a small sample of 216. I had quite a few follow-up conversations with Gallup, and they indicated that had we used a larger sample size, we probably would have seen even greater significance between our findings. Um, the other thing, too, is, as we all know at this point, my relationship to the organization, um, that I am uh, the director of Open Doors Academy, and therefore do have a relationship with the students, However, we did put measures in place to prevent biases um, from occurring in the study. And then also the timing of the study. And the reason I talk about this one is so important is because everybody here knows that the last week of school, the kids in their head are already thinking they're done. So when you give them surveys to do, it may be inflated or deflated. We don't really know. It's based on where they are at that point. But that last week of school can be pretty tough on students. And so that may be reflective in the findings. Also, generalizability of the findings. This is only generalizable to limited to similar program models and also to urban adolescent youth. 
And it's a one-sided study. It only looked at the youth's perspective. It did not look at um, teacher, parent, uh, or staff feedback. In conclusion, I just want to reiterate these points. From the findings of the study, Open Doors Academy youth are more hopeful, are more engaged in school than their school peers. When compared to state and national data, Open Doors Academy youth are more hopeful and engaged than their peers. And youth who remain in Open Doors Academy over time demonstrate increased hope, engagement, and well-being, and demonstrate increased academic performance. However, this is just, that's just the surface. And what I'd like to do is call upon a few students to stand. Eric Thomas, Jalen Brash, Imani Smith, Natalie Noble, Tracy Anna Brown, Blue McDaniel, Jordan Moore, Mia Castile, and Earl Lynch. I'd like you for a moment to look at these faces and not out loud, please not out loud, but in your head, select five of them. Select five of them in your head. Congratulations, you have just decided which five students do not deserve the opportunity to graduate high school. In the city of Cleveland, that is what we're saying. 52% graduation rate. That means of these faces in this room, half of them will not graduate. I'd like every Open Door student to please stand. Because of the work of the staff in this room and those people in this community who support this work in this organization, every single one of their faces will walk that aisle and accept their diploma. So congratulations to you guys. Parents, 
their siblings, the teachers at the school. At Miles Park Elementary School in Cleveland, Dr. Mark Gray will tell you that Open Doors Academy has not only affected the students in this room, but has also impacted the culture of that school. So what does that look like? What's the impact of that? And then recommendations for future practice. I'm sorry, for, yeah, for future practice. We go back to our four core, protect, inspire, nurture, and challenge. Protect each individual child from becoming a statistic. See the opportunity to develop holistic systems to support the development of the adolescent. Inspire youth to learn. Engage them in meaningful programming and invest in opportunities that open doors to their futures. Nurture youth over time. Invest in deeper learning and long-term impact. And challenge funders and stakeholders, many who are in this room, to look more closely at after-school education and out-of-school time learning as keys to building success amongst our future generations. And in this closing statement, I'd like to say to all of you in Open Doors that this is the beginning for you. You see me standing here. This is 12 years of school in the making for me. College, master's, PhD. I encourage each and every one of you to know that you can get here, that you can move forward, and to know that nothing can stop you other than yourself. So keep pushing and keep breaking through that glass ceiling so that you too will stand here one day in my spot and I will be sitting out there with you waiting for you to cheer you on. Thank you. Drop-in center. Um, it was a basketball drop-in center. 
at a local church, and the church had known that it had the possibility to be something bigger, um, but they didn't know what that was. And so they basically did what we called, they incorporated it as a 501c3, which meant they separated it from the church, and they hired on a staff to run it, and I was, one, I was the first one they brought up. Johnny Appleseed.